Hello dear students, how are you? I would think that you would have been doing better. Today let us discuss our next chapter from biology that's life processes. Life processes. These are the processes in the life which maintain and survivance. For survival, surveillance and for maintain our life, there are some processes, they are called life processes. First, we will discuss nutrition. What is nutrition? Okay. This is the process when we intake food and utilize it. Okay. There are two types of nutrition that is autotrophic and heterotrophic. Auto means what? Autotrophic and heterotrophic. Okay. Auto means automatically those who can prepare their own food, they are autotrophic. They are coming under autotrophic. Own, they can prepare own food for themselves. Like green plants. Green plants can prepare their own foods. Clear? Heterotrophic. Those who can't prepare their own food, they are called heterotrophic. Heterotrophic again divided into three groups. They are halogenic, okay, parasitic, and saprotrophic. Halogenic, parasitic, and saprotrophic. Okay. Those who are halogenic, those who take solid intake solid foods like us human beings are coming under this halogenic parasitic means what those who depend upon others others means what host again there are two types of parasitics they are endoparasitics and autoparasitics autoparasitics and endoparasitics those who are auto uh, autoparasitic understood Parasite means what? They depend upon other organisms. They are parasitics. They are divided into two groups, auto and endo. Clear? Auto means and uh, uh, sorry, auto parasitic means present inside the body host cell like virus and endo means they are present outside the host cell. Means example you can take lice. Lice an example that it is uh, outside the body. Clear? Next, cytotrophic. Cytotrophic means what? They also depend upon others, dead plants, dead animals, decaying like, uh, okay? Clear? Example, we can take fungus. Fungus is an example. Is it clear? This is nutrition. Okay, next one, digestion, after nu nutrition, after eating what happens, digestion, digestion the first process. Okay, what, what we are eating, that digests, clear, from mouth, it starts from mouth, actually physically what mouth is doing, mouth is breaking down the physical part of the food, then adds uh, saliva into it and partially break down the, okay, partially break down carbohydrates. First one is mouth. It starts from mouth. Then it will enter into esophagus. Esophagus is the food pipe, we can say esophagus, okay. Clear? The food enters to the esophagus to stomach. Okay, stomach. Inside stomach, actually there are three types of enzymes present. Three types of enzymes uh, there. Uh, uh, one is uh, HCL, second one is pepsin. HCL, second one is pepsin. In Sorry, here. From stomach, it secretes, right? HCL, pepsin. Okay. Third one is uh, mucus. Clear? What is HCL doing? HCL provides the acidic environment uh, to the stomach. 
it creates an uh, as we know that hcl is a is an acid so it will provide an acidic environment and pepsin actually pepsin uh, digest protein synthesize protein okay clear mucus what it is doing actually mucus is giving a protection to the stomach layering clear next one it will go to after stomach it will go to small intestine small intestine actually the maximum process of digestion occurs here in uh, small intestine okay after that final digestion occur here in small intestine in small intestine from liver bile juice comes from pancreas pancreatic juice from liver bile juice secretes okay then from pancreas pancreas pancreatic juice okay and other enzymes are also involved here and uh, some other uh, juices also secretes from small intestine they helps in digestion of the food next one then some undigested food particles will be there they will go to large intestine large intestine clear understood then large intestine to anus okay rectum rectum to anus anus will eject ejection will occur clear this is the process mouth esophagus then stomach stomach to small intestine small intestine to large intestine large intestine to rectum rectum to anus anus to ejection process clear here you have to remember that what type of secretion occurs hcl pepsin and mucus here bile juice is very important and pancreatic juice is also very important clear this is the process of digestion from digestion from life processes from digestion some question might come next one is our respiratory system respiratory system respiratory system actually two parts two types one is breathing second one is respiration breathing inhale and exhale inhale of gases and exhale of gases that is we can say breathing okay breathing starts from nostril breathing from nostril nostril to nasal cavity this is the nasal cavity okay nasal cavity okay from nasal cavity it will go to pharynx then it will go to larynx pharynx then it will go to larynx then it will go to trachea okay after trachea it will go to bronchi or bronchis after bronchis it will go to okay bronchioles from bronchiole it will go to alveolus clear understood nostril nostril to nasal cavity nasal cavity to pharynx pharynx to larynx larynx to trachea trachea to bronchus bronchus to bronchioles bronchioles to alveolus clear what is trachea here you do, would have been uh, know that what is trachea trachea is a tube like structure and alveolus actually sac like structure is alveolus okay clear this is the total process of respiration system next we will sorry of uh, clear breathing next one is 
respiration second one is respiration clear respiration actually what happens in respiration when we uh, digest the food okay simple digested food will be converted to en energy converted to energy and uh, in this pro this process is called respiration digestion food will convert into energy that is called respiration respiration are two types aerobic and anaerobic aerobic and anaerobic aerobic means oxygen is present here with oxygen with oxygen here lack of oxygen lack of oxygen clear aerobic is with oxygen here lack of oxygen is there so in anaerobic again two types and aerobic one anaerobic actually sometime what happens suppose we are just uh, uh, doing some exercise hard exercise then what happen, happens our, our muscles uh, tired okay due to what happens here lactic acid releases plus energy but here small amount of energy will release clear in muscle muscle cells you have to remember this one huh? okay another big happens in our body human body but some part some in muscle part it occurs there is a anaerobic means oxygen is not required and also anaerobic uh, yeast is also doing anaerobic without presence of oxygen yeast can be uh, respirate clear what happens here it will produce ethanol ethanol plus carbon dioxide okay plus some amount of energy will release this is very important question 2 atp of energy will release remember this 2 atp in anaerobic how many what is the amount of energy release that is 2 atp this is the same one more question clear here in anaerobic what will happen anaerobic, uh, in arabic arabic respiration is with oxygen it occurs in mitochondria mitochondria okay here huge amount of energy will release carbon dioxide plus water plus energy will release how much amount of energy will release that is 38 atp remember 38 atp will release in arabic in anaerobic only 2 atp of energy will be released okay clear so in human body two types of respiration occur don't think that only one type of respiration arabic and anaerobic but it occurs only sometimes anaerobic sometimes okay clear this is what respiration respiratory system next one is our circulatory system this is very very important remember this uh, circulatory system is a very very important okay after the digestion circulatory okay after digestion what happens energy releases energy will circulate throughout the body okay who will circulate this is can be carried out through three things first one is heart three parts heart blood vessels and circulatory fluid heart heart blood vessels okay then fluid fluid means what blood is blood itself is fluid okay heart what is it is doing it is pumping okay it acts like a pump blood vessels are like carriers they carry who are blood vessels okay veins arteries and capillaries veins arteries and capillaries they are called as blood vessels fluid is blood is the fluid clear now we will discuss heart heart okay listen 
heart is having four chambers four chambers clear one two three four okay on, on upper side two chambers actually this is not the shape of heart just you imagine that uh, um, in uh, um, there are four chambers clear here in left side okay oxygenated blood is there oxygenated blood here deoxygenated blood remember deoxygenated blood is on the right side this is left side left side this is right side always on the right side deoxygenated blood on the left side oxygenated blood <coughs> sorry clear upper two are called as atriums these upper two are called atriums and these two are called ventricles clear <coughs> here oxygenated blood here deoxygenated blood auric uh, atriums and ventricles clear left side of two chambers are oxygenated this is left side this is uh, right side to me but left side to you look at here this is left side this is right side right side or uh, deoxygenated blood are there okay aorta remember that aorta aorta is the aorta is the largest part okay aorta is the largest artery in the body there are two types of uh, veins vena cava okay one is superior vena cava and another one is upper one is superior vena cava lower one is uh, inferior vena cava takes deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body to the right side of the heart clear and pulmonary vein takes all the oxygenated blood to different uh, different parts of the body clear from left uh, left atrium clear so let us see the diagram again i am erasing same diagram i will do from here you can understand better suppose it is the lungs what is this this lungs it is heart heart is having four chambers already i told clear from lungs from lungs from pulmonary vein from pulmonary vein okay oxygenated blood will come to left auricle then it will go to left okay sorry ventricular left auricle to left ventricular then it will go to the different parts of the body different parts of the body clear this is what this is aorta already i told you aorta is the largest part of the circulatory system clear from again deoxygenated blood will be uh, coming here okay through vena cava already i told you vena cava vena cava will take all the deoxygenated blood to here it is to right atrium then it will go to left atrium then again this blood will go to lungs this is deoxygenated blood it is go to lungs is it clear i i think it would have been clear so there are two process two cycles are there that's why it is called double circulatory system look at here this is first circle this enters here lungs lungs to left auricle uh, then left ventricle then it will go to different parts this is one circle one cycle then again the oxygenated blood will come to when come through vena cava to right auricle then left left auricle vent sorry left ventricle it is sorry ventricle then it will go to lungs again to oxidize 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 okay to pure purify the blood clear this is total process of heart okay <clears throat> next one is our excretory system excretory means what which will excrete excretory system 
which excretes the waste materials from our body that is called excretory system. There are actually three parts, lungs, skin and kidney. Lungs, skin and kidney. What lung excretes? Lungs excrete carbon dioxide from our body. Clear? Skin excretes sweat. Sweat is also, okay, sweat is also a waste product which is which contains little amount of nitrous nitrogen is nitros okay nitrogen is very dangerous that is a waste product which produces in our body that will be excreted from by skin next one is kidney kidney is also excretes uh, in the form of urine okay that is also nitrous along with the water clear now we will discuss kidney kidney okay in kidney there are three types of filtration occurs steps of formation of urine first urine forms okay it will come to uh, the kidney kidney to uh, uterus uterus to bladder bladder to bladder to uh, urethra clear actually what happens kidney will produce the urine kidney will produce the urine then it will ureter ureters will bring the urine to bladder then bladder stores it for a while okay bladder stores store it for a while then bladder will just pass the urine through urethra urethra clear this is the process but how kidney forms urine okay we will discuss steps of formation of urine there are three steps okay first one is ultra filtration steps in steps ultra filtration steps of formation of urine first one is ultra filtration okay here actually maximum okay uh, filtration occurs next one is reabsorption re absorption absorbs right absorption okay then third process is tubule secretion tubule secretion secretion clear what is ultra filtration okay it occurs in glomerulus remember that this is the major part glomerulus is the major part which filters all the urine present now where it is present it is present in nephron nephron very important part nephron nephron is called as the structural and functional unit of kidney this might be coming in our exam okay coming in the exam that site of uh, urination site of urination is uh, nephron clear next one is we will discuss the steps first one is afferent atriole afferent atriole okay Efferent atriole to what happens? Glomerulus will filter it. Glomerulus will filter, ultra filtration will occur here. Ultra filtration occurs here in glomerulus. Then it will go to Bauman's capsule. Bauman's capsule. Okay. What Bauman's capsule will do? Bauman's capsule will separate all the glucose and salts. Glucose as well as salt okay then reabsorption occur in pct okay proximal converter table pct proximal okay pct proximal converter and tube co converter table actually what happens it is it reabsorbs what reabsorbs 
H2O, glucose and salt reabsorbs. Okay, what it reabsorbs? H2O plus waste materials like glucose and salt. Glucose and salt. Okay. To, to, uh, from PC, PCT2, it will go to loop of hand, loop of, okay. The same thing occurs here, reabsorption of, reabsorption of H2O and salt, okay. Next, it will go to DCT, DCT, remember, DCT is a direct controlled tubule, okay. Contributed direct, sorry, distal, distal, contributed tubule. Okay, what it is doing? Actually, reabsorption of H2O and salt plus ions. Okay, it balances the electrolyte, electrolytic ions like sodium and potassium can be balanced from here. Sodium Na plus K plus sodium and potassium ions balanced here in DCT. Okay, next one is, uh, six, sixth one is, uh, this is the last process, collecting, okay, collecting of, co sorry, collecting duct will collect, okay, collect the urines, next it will go through urethra, ureter and urethra, urethra, will pass the urine in urea maximum in urine maximum urea plus water is present okay through this whole excretion process occurs look at your afferent atri uh, atrioles first step is uh, glomerulus glomerulus uh, will ultra filter here glomerulus to Bowman's capsule Bowman's capsule will uh, filter the glucose and salts then PCT PCT will again reabsorb the water, glucose and salt, then loop of handle that is also the same thing will occur, salt and water plus glucose they will absorb, they will, after that it will go to DCT, DCT will balance the electrolytic, electrolytic, um, um, okay, electrolyte balance, electrolytic balance it will uh, uh, balance here, next one it will go to, uh, to go through collecting the duct to urethra then in from urethra it passes the urine and uh, our excretion process is over here i think this chapter will be this class will be very very helpful to you and uh, we will meet again in the next class thank you have a nice day